Hi there, I'm Dr. Dan and we're discussing glutathione again and we'll call this part two of this series where we're talking about glutathione and especially heavy metals and glutathione depletion. And the summary of course is that if, if you keep your glutathione levels up and we're looking at some testing to show you know um, how, how you can detect that but if uh, glutathione levels are not adequate then you will be subject to more damage from things like heavy metals. Now we're going to talk a little bit specifically about autism and I want to talk about this one article Neuroendocrinology Letters October 2005. In this letter there are references to 23 different articles on the topic of autism and vaccines and glutathione. Now one thing it's important to note that autism was not even described at all until 1943. So there were maybe a few cases around and one person actually described this and got it published. And of course now the incidence is um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 1 in 100 or you know, 1 in 120 or something. And so and 1 in 6 children have been um, described to have some sort of learning disability. So how did all this come about? Is are we just describing things better or are we doing something to our kids that's making a difference? And of course if you're a parent you definitely want to know the answer. But this uh, International Journal of Toxicology talked about uh, glutathione levels in the in the hair and what they found was that autistic the kids with autism don't seem to have the ability to remove the, the um, mercury from their brains. So you give them the injection with thimerosal or maybe they're getting mercury from, from other sources and they're not removing it through, uh, through normal sources, through the urine, through the hair. And so that was a very interesting study and they found that pretty much across the board. And of course this buildup of um, mercury will be absolutely damaging to, to any brain, especially developing brain. And of course in 2005 Science News reported on a glutathione research from the Arkansas Children's Hospital and they found that 100% of children with autism had significant lowers of levels in their blood compared to normal kids. So what does that tell you? That perhaps one of the, one of the mechanisms for the, the damage caused by the, the mercury or other metals is, you know, has to do with um, the depletion of glutathione and maybe these kids have some genetic um, inability to produce glutathione levels at a, at a proper protective rate. So you know, glutathione levels are also associated with uh, increased levels of homocysteine that have been shown to be uh, a, um, a real important key of anti-inflammatory stress. But anyway, the important thing is to make sure that you keep your glutathione levels up. And the way you do that, of course, is with uh, taking glutathione precursors like N-acetylcysteine and also uh, we like the LifeWave patches because LifeWave glutathione patches have the ability to, to stimulate your body's own production of these. Before you believe the popular press that vaccines have no role whatsoever in autism, you know, it's important to, uh, to keep reading. And, you know, I know this is getting hit pretty hard in the popular press right now, but, you know, you just have to, uh, to keep reading it to understand exactly what's going on. The truth is out there. The truth definitely is in print, but it's not going to be just what you hear on, um, on Good Morning America or something like that. So anyway, that's a little talk on glutathione. And if you understood what I said, you're going to be working to make sure you keep your glutathione levels up so that you stay as healthy as you can be. So thanks a lot for listening. I'm Dr. Dan.